The Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine. Every day, millions of women all over America serve Kraft's parquet margarine because it tastes so good. To market, to market, to buy some parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You'll like it, you'll like it, like millions who say their favorite margarine is parquet. Parquet Margarine. P-A-R-K-A-Y. It's wonderful. It's May. May has brought the flowers and the flies to Summerfield. Our old friend Gildersleeve has just plopped down on the sofa, filled with that righteous weariness and sense of rich accomplishment which come to a man only after he has just put up the screens. <sighs> By this unexpected maneuver, he has trapped half the flies in Summerfield. Some of them buzz the sofa. Uh, go away, go away. Others butt their heads against the screens, trying to get out. Birdie is on the prowl with a swatter. I'd love to live on the folks who live, the folks who live on Easy Street, just sit around all day, just sit and play generally life is sweet, for those who live on night, darn you, Easy Street. Mm, now what? Fat chance of me living on Easy Street, if it ain't flies, it's doorbells. Oh, Craig, what is it? I want to talk to Leroy's uncle. Well, I don't know. Mr. Gilsleeve's kind of busy right now, Craig. I don't like to disturb him, but if it's something important... Mr. Gilsleeve, excuse me. Huh? Craig here says that he Oh, wants... there, Craig. Haven't seen you around lately. How's everything over at your house? Mother well, is she? Leroy won't let me play in his hut. What's that? He won't let me play in his hut. Oh, well, I'm sure there must be some misunderstanding, Craig. I'm sure Leroy would be delighted to have you play with him. Have you asked him nicely? Yes. What did he say? He threw me out. He... Oh, well, <clears throat> we'll just have to see about this. Uh, where is this hut? Out in the lot, out in the back. Oh, is that what that is? I'll uh, handle this, Bertie. Yes, I'm sorry. If I'd known what it was... Well, I'd these be... international crises come up, Bertie. They have to be faced. Come on, Craig. He was mean to me, too. Well, I'm sorry to hear that about Leroy, if it's true. Are you going to spank him? <laughs> We'll see, Craig. We'll see. Leroy! Leroy! What do you think I'm calling you for? I'm right there, I won't be a second. Yes, yes. He made me do all the work, too. Yes. And yesterday he wrote something on the sidewalk with a piece of flower pot. He did, eh? What did he write? Something bad. Yes. Who's that out there with you? Piggy? Yeah. I thought so. Anytime you two get together, they're... what in the world have you done to your shirt front? And your trousers, look at you. Filthy. Where have you been? Well, that's the way you get into the hut. You have to crawl under the side. That's the way we keep the enemy out. Oh, for heaven's sake. Was there something you wanted, Unc? Yes. What's this Craig tells it's me? It's a of... dirty lie. The whole thing's a big, dirty lie. It is not. No, wait a minute. You haven't even heard what Craig told me yet. I don't have to. Yes, you do. In this country, Leroy, a man is presumed to be innocent till he's been proven guilty. Not him. Oh, you big jipper. <laughs> now, Craigie, let's get to the bottom of things here. I want the facts, Leroy. The plain facts without evasion and without embellishment. Without what? Just tell me what happened. Well, well, what are you doing on Craig? Show me the What are you doing on time? Leroy. Why, he spoils everything, Uncle. He's too little to be in the hut. Anywhere there isn't room for him. And besides, he wants to be the whole cheese. And if you don't let him, he goes off bawling to somebody. Oh, you go to. Now, now. 
Is there any reason why Craig can't play nicely with the rest of you boys, Leroy? Ask him. Don't ask me. I mean, is there any reason why he can't be included? Well, Leroy wants to be president all the time. Well, who started it? Who started the whole president thing? President of what? Whole... President of what? President of the hut. I'm the president and Piggy's vice president. Who decided all that? I did. That's not the democratic way, Leroy. Presidents are decided by elections. You hold an election, and whoever gets the most votes, he's elected. Now, to put an end to this argument, I think you should hold an election of officers. All three of you. Well, what's the use? Peggy will vote for me, and there's two out of the three votes right there. <laughs> so I'm president anyway. Oh, but you never vote for yourself, Leroy. What? Oh, never. Why not, for corn's sake? It's not considered good form, my boy. Now, you vote for the other man, and the other man votes for you. That way, the result is just the same, but it's more modest and more gentlemanly. Sounds screwy to me. Yeah. Well, anyway, that's the way it's done. <laughs> now, why don't you boys run along and hold your election of officers and see if you can't get along together like good sports? Huh? You heard me, Leroy, and take Craig with you. <laughs> Come on, Craig. That's good, children. Play nicely now. You better be nice to me, Leroy. Your uncle says he'll give you a beat. <laughs> Little pest. I wouldn't let him in my club either. Oh, well. Get him straightened out of the skill, please? <laughs> yes, Bertie, I guess so. Always so. Man needs the wisdom of Solomon. Yeah. It's all in knowing how to handle him, Bertie. All in knowing how to handle him. Leroy, now what? Well, I've been getting gifts, my friend. What happened? I voted for Piggy like you told me, and he voted for himself as any guy. <laughs> now, Leroy, try to get a hold of yourself. You'll never have any friends, you know, unless you learn to be a good sport and a good loser. Why don't they learn a little... We can't always wait for the other fellow to make the first move, my boy. You must set them an example. Now, you're older than Craig. I'm and... no older than Piggy. I'm just nicer, that's all. Uh, we won't discuss that. Now, blow your nose. What's the matter with him, for heaven's sake? Why don't you mind your own business? Well, I only asked, for heaven's sake. Now, Marjorie. I mean, after all. Leroy's had a hard afternoon. Let's not upset him anymore, shall we? Who's upsetting him? I merely walked in, saw him sitting there with his eyes all red. And no, why not? No, no. But I told you about making friends with other boys, Leroy. That goes for brothers and sisters, too. A friendly gesture brings a friendly response. Yeah? Really, I never saw anyone so touchy. I walk in the room... Uh, and... Marjorie, why don't you just run upstairs? What for? Because your old uncle asks it. There are times, my dear, when I believe you rubbed Leroy the wrong way. You said it. That's not for you to say, my boy. <laughs> I don't know what this is all about. But I assure you, nothing could induce me to stay in the room a minute longer. Happy little family. I'm glad she's gone. You better be a little nice to your sister, young man. At the rate you're going, she may be the only friend you'll have left. <laughs> and stop that sniveling. I'm sick of it. No reason for you to feel so sorry for yourself. You're as much to blame as anybody. Now, when Craig comes over here the next time, if he ever does... I want you to play nicely, you understand? Play nicely. Okay. Now go upstairs and get cleaned up for your supper. <laughs> A man can stand just so much. But when he's had enough, he's had enough. <laughs> oh, found it. I started out this day feeling fine. Put up the screens and everything. Stop it, both of you! What gets into children? Confound it. Bertie, can't we do something about these flies? Doorbell! Sit still, Leroy. Finish your supper. I finished. Let Bertie go. Hold oh, still, everybody. I'll answer it. Mr. Gillespie, looks like you'll need a little more tapioca there. I'll be back in a flash. No, thank you, Bertie. I've had my fill. 
You back again, Chris? Tell Leroy to come on. Leroy? Well, wait here. I'll see you. Man to see you, Leroy. It's Greg. Tell him to go home. Now, Leroy, what did I just tell you? Just before supper. Mm. You see, Craig's forgotten the whole thing already. He's willing to forgive and forget. Why shouldn't you? Remember, my boy, a friendly gesture brings a friendly response. Now, you go out there and play nicely with him. That's the boy. No, for... And I mean it. Remember, I'm going to be listening. Hi, Craig, you old boy. Come on out. Okay. What do you want to play? I'm going to have a birthday party. Yeah? When? You can't come. <laughs> Who said I wanted to come? We're going to have an organ grinder with a monkey. Who said so? My mom. Who hasn't seen organ grinders? With a monkey. Who hasn't seen monkeys? We're going to have ice cream and cake. We have ice cream and cake every day, practically. Well, I've got some waiting for me right now. The cake is going to have prizes in it. Anybody who bites into one gets to keep it. Who said so? My mom. I don't believe it. Ask my mom. And we're going to rent a pony, too. Anybody that's invited to the party gets to ride on him, free. You can't ride on him. Oh, I hope you little bum. Oh, are you lying about the whole thing? Oh, <laughs> It's just like the bullets to have all those things. A pony and, and a monkey and, and things in the cake. No, no. Uh, Try to get hold of yourself, my boy. Uh, After all, it was really your own fault, you know. Craig was over here this afternoon. Why weren't you nicer to him then? How did I know he was going to have a birthday party? <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be back very shortly. Most women get genuine satisfaction out of planning little surprises for regular meals and lunches, like crispy hot rolls or golden crunchy waffles. And most women have discovered that the whole family enjoys these treats more if they're served with delicious, flavor-fresh parquet, the margarine of craft quality. Parquet is good for your family, too, for it's a splendid energy food and a good source of vitamin A. It's fresh, delicate... Uh, just a minute. Are you the announcer on this program? Yes. Now, a parquet's fresh, delicate uh, just flavor... Just a minute. What are you trying to do up here, anyway? I'm reading the commercial, if you don't mind. You're trying to sell something, aren't you? Kraft's parquet margarine, is that it? Yes, that's it. Well, why don't you sell it? Why beat around the bush? Do you realize you might be boring people? Now, just a minute. Listen. What are the reasons for using this parquet? The reasons? Why, it's a spread that tastes wonderful. It's a fine energy food, and it's mighty economical, too. Well, why didn't you say I so? I was trying to get... Parquet tastes good, it's good for you, and it saves you money. Is that right? Well, sure. Well, why but... don't you say so? Well, parquet is terrific. To market, to market, to buy some parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. you like it, you like it, like millions who say. Their favorite margarine is parquet. Parquet margarine. P-A-R-K-A-Y. It's wonderful. <laughs> Now let's get back to Gildersleeve and to Leroy, who is getting life explained to him. Craig's having a birthday party this afternoon and you're not invited. What's so terrible about that? Doesn't really hurt you. Now, if you just put the whole thing out of your mind and go outdoors and play, get interested in something... Leroy, you're not listening to me. Here come the Bailey twins. My boy, you're just torturing yourself. I got presents. Oh, for heaven's sake. (laughs) Now there's something to be thankful for. At least you don't have to give Craig a present. I was going to give him that modeling clay I got for Christmas. (laughs) But you don't have to give him a present. Who wants modeling clay? Yeah. Here comes two more kids. And Craig, look at them tearing out of the house to grab the presents. What manners. Model airplane. He's already got one. Leroy, isn't there something you'd like to do? Why don't you call up Piggy? He had to go to the dentist. He doesn't have to spend the whole afternoon there. Yes, he does. He's getting new braces. Oh. Well, there's something else you can be thankful for. You're not at the dentist. Here comes a truck. Huh? The pony. The pony's in the truck. Yes? 
Huh? Well, he's not a very big pony. I think he's big. Big enough, anyway. Gosh, maybe if I went out and stood around, they'd let me ride him. Leroy, have you no pride? I want to ride the pony. I forbid you to go out there and hang around. Maybe you have no pride, but I've got plenty. Now, buck up, my boy, if you don't... What's all the excitement? There's no excitement. Leroy, why don't you and Marjorie go for a walk? A walk with my sister? sister? Some fun. You said it. Craig's getting on the pony. I knew he'd hog the first ride. Well, it's his birthday. Marjorie, Leroy's feeling badly because he wasn't invited to Craig's party. Uh, Can't we uh, think of something to do that would be fun? Like what? I'm asking you. How about a nice game of Parcheesi? Huh, that's for kids. Well, I'll do anything you want, Leroy. There. Did you hear your sister, Leroy? Yeah. She'll do anything she can to help make your afternoon pleasant. Very generous. Thanks, Marge. Oh, that's okay. What would you like to do? (sighs) Nothing, I guess. Well, in that case, I think I'll go over to Francie's. I'll be home for supper. But, Marjorie... So long, Leroy. My George. How children can be so selfish. Here comes the organ grinder and the monkey. Stop looking out of that window. Gosh, the monkey's taken off his hat. I'll tell you what let's do, Leroy. Let's go out to that shack of yours. How about that? No, I don't want it. I'd like to see your shack. You wouldn't like it. I bet I would. Come on, Leroy. There's a favor to me. We can have a lot of fun. Doing what? Well, we might cook something. Build a fire in the shack. Have you got a chimney? Nah. What? No chimney? Well, we'll have to get at that right away. Come along, my boy. We'll go out the back way. I never heard of such a thing. A shack with no chimney, no smokestack. <laughs> a shack without a stack. <laughs> we don't want a shack without a stack now, do we? No, sir. Hello, Bertie. You want something to steal, please? No, no, just passing through. We're going out and play in Leroy's shack in the backyard. Both of you? <laughs> That's right, Bertie. Say, how about giving us a couple of potatoes? We might bake some potatoes out there, huh, Leroy? If you want to. Sure, a couple of spuds, Bertie. Yes, sir. You want me to wash them off for you? No, we're campers. We're roughing it, Bertie, aren't we, Leroy? Yeah. Here's a couple that's washed anyway. It don't hurt them any. Well, that's fine, Bertie. Come on, Leroy. We've got our provisions now. (laughs) Uh, George, we couldn't have a nicer day for a little country expedition. Perfect day, Leroy. Yeah. That's the spirit. Now, let me hear you say, ha-ha. Come on, say, ha-ha. (laughs) Uh-huh. <laughs> well, so this is the hut. Yeah. Well, it looks fine. Yes, sir, you've done a wonderful job here, my boy. I don't think it's so good. Uh, how do you get inside it? You crawl into there. You see there where it's dug out a little? That? <laughs> I don't think you can make it, Unc. Nonsense. Watch me. Are you in? Yes, I'm in. (laughs) Come on, Leroy, there's plenty of room. Okay. Oh, you're stepping on my arm. Sorry. Well, how do you like it? Oh, fine. Yeah, it's a real hut, my boy. Z. <coughs> Ventilation might be improved a little. Yeah. Oh, but I like it. Yes, sir. This is one of the best huts I was ever in. Can you move over a little? I'm right up against the wall. Oh. Well, this is the life. Yeah. (sighs) Yes, sir. We can have more fun right here than they're having over at Craig's, Leroy. That party is too young for you, Leroy. Craig's little friends. In that pony. Why, if you'd ride him, your feet would drag on the ground. I can put my feet in the stirrups. No. (laughs) Be like trying to ride on a dog, Leroy. This is the life. You think we can light a fire in here? A fire? Mm, well, I don't know. Mm, you 
if you could move over a little. I'm up against the wall. Oh, oh yeah, that's the wall. Well, I don't know just where we could have a fire. I didn't think we could. I'm sorry. That's okay. And anyway, we, we don't need a fire. We don't have to bake the potatoes. We're campers, aren't we? Oh, gosh, what do you mean? Didn't you ever eat a potato raw? They're great. <laughs> yeah? Sure. If I can get them out of my pocket. Here. Well, I'm, I'm not very hungry. Try a bite. Uh, are you going to try it? Me? Well, sure, sure, I'll try it. We're great, great. <laughs> Quietly, Roy, try it. Do I have to? No, not if you don't want to. Uh, here, throw mine out of the hole there, will you? Now, um, can't you move your knees a little, Leroy? I'm up against the wall. Uh, the wall, yeah. Darn hut. Why didn't you build it bigger? Dark, too. What is there to do in here? Nothing. You said it. I hear somebody coming. Right in there, ma'am. That's where they are. Thank you. Mr. Gilbert, please. Huh? Who's that? It's Mrs. Bullard. Mrs. Bullard? Oh, yes, Mrs. Bullard. Come on in. Uh, no, I'll be right out. <laughs> Just a minute. I'm going to get out and get in, do I? Good afternoon. Mercy. Is Leroy in there with you? Oh, yes, he's in there. Well, I wondered why he wasn't at Craig's party. Didn't Craig deliver the invitation? Well, no, he didn't. Party, you say? Leroy, Craig's having a party. I'll be right out. I can't imagine how this could have happened. I distinctly told Craig... Well, let's not blame little Craig. Hi, Mrs. Bullard. Hello, Leroy. I'm sorry there's been a misunderstanding. Craig's having a birthday party, and of course it just isn't a party without you. What do you think of that, Leroy? I don't think he wants me to come. Huh? Well, I don't know what could give you an idea like that. We need you terribly to guide the pony for the smaller boys. Well, whatever you say, Mrs. Boyd. I'm afraid Leroy's not dressed for a party. Oh, my goodness, that doesn't matter. And I hope you'll come too, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well... Uh... Never mind how you look. This is an outdoor party. Oh. Happy birthday, Craigie. Here's your present. Thanks. Modeling play, just what I wanted. You want to ride on the pony? Yeah. You take a ride, Leroy, and then you can help the others. Okay, Mrs. Boyd. Come on, Craigie, old boy. Hey, you guys, get off the pony. Leroy's been riding. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't they sweet together? Craig's devoted to Leroy. Oh, and Leroy thinks the world of Craig. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't imagine how he came to forget the invitation. But he seems to be absent-minded sometimes. Oh, sure. What'll I do with this modeling clay? Oh, mercy. He just dropped Leroy's present, didn't he? Uh, well, Craig is terribly careless. Uh, he's young. I I'll take it, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, oh, dear, that again. Uh, yeah. uh, would you like to come around and back? We've got a few grown-ups out there. Oh, fine. There'll be ice cream and cake a little later. Oh, regular party, eh? Say, more grown-ups here than children. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Phoebe, I think you're just terrible. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Hello, Phoebe. Hello, Leela. Good afternoon, Mr. Gillespie. Trot Martin. I wondered if you were coming. Never miss a party, Leela. Happy birthday, Leela. Oh, <laughs> it's not my birthday, silly. It's little Craig's. Joke. Oh. <laughs> uh, I don't know how well you know Mr. Gildersleeve, Mrs. Bullard, but sometimes he imagines he's a comedian. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure he's very amusing. Gangway, everybody. Here comes the punch. Sh Hooker, how did he get in on this? Hello, Gildy. Hello, Judge. Leela, if you move that tray of glasses down to this end, give her a hand, will you, Gildy? The old goat always bossing everybody around. <laughs> There. Oh, thank you so much, Judge. Have you tasted the punch? I took the liberty, yes. I pronounce it delicious. May I tender you a cupful? Just half a cup, please. 
What about you, Lila? Can I tempt you with a little nectar? Oh, I'm just a dough punch. We always have it at parties down home. And it seems to do something for me. Especially when I'm dying, Sin. Uh, Don't you just love punch at a dying, Mrs. Buller? Oh, indeed I do. Oh, this punch is simply delicious. Try some, Throckmorton. Try some, Mr. Peavy. Why, I don't think I'd better. Thank you. It's a little too soon after lunch for me. Well, it's uh, it's four o'clock, Peavy. It is? Well, then it's too close to my supper time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the same. Well, I'll have some. What the heck? <laughs> oh, you. May I propose a toast? I give you the young man whose natal day we are here to celebrate. Oh. As so well a brought up and mentally a boy as I've had the privilege of knowing. Master Craig Bullard. Yes, Mrs. Bullard. Craig is a credit to yourself and Mr. Bullard. Unlike some of the children in the neighborhood, I might add. Are you trying to get my goat, you old goat? <laughs> if the shoe fits. Well, now, Judge, I think Leroy is one of the nicest boys in Summerfield. We're always glad to have him over here, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, thanks. If he makes any trouble, just throw him out in his ear. Oh, he's never a problem. Uh-huh. He and Craig play. <laughs> Craig, what on earth is Leroy doing? Is that true, you're right? I wouldn't get off and give me a ride. You didn't do it, Leroy. I just went where all these go and all the way out of the way. Leroy! 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 The great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just a minute. Every day, millions of women all over America serve Kraft's parquet margarine because it tastes so good. Try it soon. See if you don't prefer parquet margarine's fine, fresh flavor to any other brand. It's true. Every day, millions of women all over America serve Kraft's parquet margarine because it tastes so good. Look first for parquet margarine made by Kraft. To market, to market, to buy some parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You like it, you like it, like millions who say. Their favorite margarine is parquet. Parquet margarine. P A R K A Y. It's wonderful. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight our program is being awarded a very special honor. May I present the internationally syndicated columnist, novelist, critic, and poet, Mr. Jimmy Starr. Thank you, Harold. As a student of radio entertainment, I have long felt that too little attention is paid to the music, which is such an essential element in the best dramatic programs. And since Jack Meekin has done what I consider a very creative job with the music on the Gildersleeve program, I take pleasure in handing him the Jimmy Starr plaque for outstanding originality in composing, arranging, and conducting music for radio. Many thanks, Jimmy. I'm very honored. Yes, Jimmy. It's nice to know that Mr. Meekin's contribution is appreciated by our listeners. Good night, folks. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. It is written by John Whedon and Sam Moore. The music is by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Louise Erickson, Lillian Randolph, Shirley Mitchell, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand. This is John Lang saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Good night. Listen in again next Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> And now, a special help in menu planning. Try Pabstet, the delicious cheddar cheese food that melts into smooth golden sauces, spreads easily for sandwiches and snacks, slices into neat wedges when chilled for serving with fruit or pie for dessert. Treat your family to both delicious varieties, golden cheddar Pabstet in the yellow package and pimento Pabstet in the red package. Ask for Pabstet. Pabstet, the delicious cheese food. This is NBC, the national broadcast.